Okay, so ladies, we're looking at P3, regionally significant plants. Um, obviously, agriculture in New South Wales, in Australia, with there's a lot of plants grown, so many different crops, so many different uses. So this whole dot point is about getting you guys thinking about all of the stuff that, that gets grown and where it ends up. Um, for the most part, there's a lot of stuff that ends up in stock feed. Some of it ends up in human consumption and cotton produces fiber. Um, I'm going to go through each of these with us here now. Um, up the top here, we've got some pretty pictures. This is the one on the left is of a wheat crop um, that's been planted somewhere in the central west by the looks of it. And then we've got a cotton crop being harvested here. Um, so that's the, the cotton itself um, gets pressed up into a big bale, which they leave in the middle of the paddock there. And then it gets picked up from that. Um, okay, so I'm going to quickly go through each of these. Um, and what I would like for you guys to do is to do your own research, combine it with what I've got here for you and um, put it on the sheet. Very similar to what I've done here now. So cotton, um, it produces a fibre, obviously. Within that fibre, though, are a heap of seeds. Um, those seeds are extracted from a, in a cotton gin, which is a, a rough processing plant. Um, that gin produces a bale of cotton, which then gets exported um, into the garment market. So all your cotton clothing, all of that kind of stuff. Those seeds, they can be crushed and oil extracted. So a lot of it is used in fast food for, um, for deep fry. Um, and then cotton seed trash can end up into stock feed as well. So feedlots use it, it's really high in energy. So it makes great stock feed. Rice, so you've got your grains going straight into to cooking. Some of it is used in processing. So an example of that would be the, the partially, or well, the pre-cooked rice that you heat up in the microwave. Um, then some of the, the waste products. So a hull is basically the, the bit that goes around the seed. Um, it gets removed from the seeds and those hulls can be used for, for bedding material for, for pigs and stuff like that. Same with the rice trash. Um, if you harvest your field and then mow it, you can get all of the, the stubble and that trash can go into stock feed. Um, not stock feed, but for bedding materials into the um, landscape um, industry as well. Then we've got maize. So maize is corn. Um, so we have different types of maize. So we have gritting maize is like the cornflakes, Doritos, that kind of thing. Um, and then we have silage production. So that's cutting the green plant, um, mulching it, and then putting it into a big pit to produce silage. Um, then we have sweet corn, which is direct human consumption. I don't need to explain that. Um, some maize is harvested straight for ethanol production. Um, so ethanol is a fuel, it's first cousin to alcohol um, and our green um, Bowser has 10% um, ethanol and a lot of that comes from corn, not so much in Australia, um, a lot of our ethanol comes from wheat production as well. Um, hard wheat, so we have hard wheat and soft wheat, most of the hard wheat goes into baking noodles pasta, soft wheat is biscuit cakes. Um, a lot of the low quality wheats go into um, stock feeds. So anything below like 11% protein tends to end up into stock feed. Um, barley, stock feed again, uh, some human consumption like soups, pearl barley and stuff like that. Um, and then we have malt barley. So malt barley um, goes into beer production and whiskey apparently. Um, oats, stock feed and human consumption. So rolled oats, right? That's what your porridge is. Um, that is literally the, the hull has been taken off from the, the hard bit around the, that protects the seed. And that's it, that's all rolled oats are. They literally go through a roller. 
And that is the only way that they're processed. Some of it goes into other, other foods as well. Triticale, which is a, uh, it's a hybrid. So it's a wheat and rye cross. Um, there is some human consumption of triticale, but most of it goes into stock feed. It's got really high yields, so it's a, a great stock feed. Canola is oil seed, and the, the grains are, you know, so you get paid on how much oil is in the grain, and ba the, the base that they work off is 42%. So if you get more than 42% of your grain is oil, you get a bonus. If it's less than 42%, you get docked. So you get less money for it. Um, a lot of that oil goes into cooking and all that kind of stuff. Um, they also use canola these days for a fodder crop. It's really fast growing. Um, so if you get an opportunity to plant an early um, fodder crop before it gets too cold, it will. It, you can feed it through your stock. It's quite good for that. Chickpeas, human consumption, it's a legume. Lupins, stock feed, it's a legume. Um, now, legumes, I understand you haven't been taught about, but basically legumes have a, so they're a type of plant that have a symbiotic relationship with the bacteria, so a rhizobium bacteria. Now, the plant provides a home for the bacteria, so they colonize the roots, and then the bacteria produce a form of nitrogen that the plants can use. So they take atmospheric nitrogen and then the plant and turn it into a form that the plants can use. So lucerne um, is grazing or hay. Next page, clover, stock feed, grazing or hay. Uh, sorghum, so it's a stock feed. So it goes into some traditional type foods. It's like millets. Um, it's grown quite a bit in Africa. Uh, sorghum is actually one of the, the biggest crops in Australia. A lot of ours goes into stock feed though. Um, citrus, so juice and fresh fruit, stone fruit, fresh fruit and canning. Now you've got a research task here to do. So basically I want you to pick um, three regionally significant plants. Um, I've done one here for you. I want you to do a little bit more detail. I've just done it quickly. Um, so I've done wheat. So we've got our uses, baking, noodles, pasta, and stock feed. We've got some varieties. So I Google these varieties. They change all the time. So a lot of the, the, the first one I would have put down 20 years ago would have been H40. Um, the ones that, the biggest ones that we've got at the moment are probably McKilla, McKilla, sorry, Kitty Hawk, Illabo. Um, interesting. So Illabo and Condo, they're based off um, regions, okay? Then what do we got? So when it's grown, so it's the wheat's a winter crop. So it's grown from April to November. Pests include red-legged earth mite and fungal rusts. So red-legged earth mite is a little uh, eight-legged um, animal. These ones happen to have red legs and they are teeny tiny like you old, Buggers like myself would need a, a magnifying glass. You get down, have a good look, and you'll find them. They've got red legs. They stick out a little bit, but they can cause huge damage to, to the crops. Um, and then we have fungal rust. So we have stuff like striped rust and all that kind of stuff. So basically that affects the, the leaves, so they're no longer photosynthesizing, and then there's no energy going into grain production. Um, then any other issues? So drought and frost can have large effects on, on production. Um, if the grains get too wet prior to harvest, quality can decrease. So if you get a frost when your wheat um, plant is flowering, they, those delicate parts of the, the plant get damaged and you don't get grain formation. So that whole crop has been waste. Other issues might be um, Hail can cause a huge amount of damage in a spring storm. Um, basically what happens if it gets too wet when the grains are, are fully mature, um, a lot of the enzymes get activated, um, like the, the grains are ready to germinate. And so then we can't use that um, pretty much for anything other than stock feed. So it can be a really big issue. Um, and then we've got some pretty pictures. So there's some, um, some wheat that's been harvested on the 
left hand side and then prior to harvest on the right. Okay, so I think this should be about an hour and a half's worth of work for you. Enjoy. <laughs>